look in the mirror Man, you so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's you Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I'm going to do in this educational video slash reaction video is um, do a video of the live stream I did last night. This will be part two in a two-part or maybe three-part series about women getting evicted. So what I'm going to show you right now is a woman who does housing, who is the one who determines whether or not a woman or a man gets into housing. And then I'm going to show you some women who blame all black men for getting evicted and we're going to debunk that together hold on for a second as i pull it up on the screen for you give me a second or two and here we go housing security in the u.s since the pandemic is on track to become let's talk about this i've seen a lot of women on tiktok saying that it is the black man's fault that black women are being evicted and uh, that's not the case okay the reason um we are being evicted at the at a higher rate is because um and don't take big offense but let's make some changes is because we're not financially responsible okay uh, we're not prioritizing our bills and allocating our funds correctly okay that is 100 percent correct like i said last night a lot of these women are trying to live above their means they're trying to keep up with the joneses they they are too worried about what their female peers think about them they won't ever want to think that they're doing well these women won't ever want to think that if they um go out to the mall, they can buy a Birkin bag, that they dress in Chanel, that they uh, dress in Louis Vuitton. But here's the kicker, though. It's easy to be a boss, like I said before, if your rent is only $15 a fucking month. When you're on housing, the taxpayers take up the slack. The government money, the government assistance, what do you think the government is? A bunch of people who are over a bunch of other people who pay taxes. Whenever they get on this housing, government assistance, we pay for that, okay? And you'll see women out there running around buying eyelashes, buying um two, three hundred dollar weaves, putting money on weed, putting money on Ciroc, putting money on Percocets, putting money on a whole lot of other things to the point where they don't even budget their money well enough to stay in a home. So they have to get kicked the fuck out. OK, let's keep going. OK, I had uh, one of my residents told me she said I have to pay my more important bills first. Now, unless you're planning on sleeping in your car, your car payment it's not the most important bill you have. Everybody might see you driving around in it, but that's not the most important bill that you have. Your rent is the most important bill that you have. And so that's why that needs to be paid first because in renting, you stay here as long as you pay here. It's sad that you have to tell a grown ass woman that right there, that you have to pay rent in order to stay in the place that you're renting from. How in the hell do you survive? I don't understand that. That is basic common sense. That don't make no sense at all, man. Okay. The program has not removed the black man from the household, okay? The black woman filling out that household composition form made the decision to omit the black man from the household, okay? Whenever someone applies for federally subsidized housing, they receive paperwork, okay? List whoever's in your household. They list themselves, they list the children, and they omit the black man. Why? Because in many cases, the black man has income. In other words, these black women are scammers. They're trying to scam the government. That's all it is. See, they want to um, not put the man on the paperwork showing that he's going to stay there so that she can continue to pay the little bit of sum of money that she has to pay to stay there. And also utilize not only her income, but her husband or her boyfriend's income. Because you see, if she puts her man on that lease, then she, then she is required to spend a little bit more towards the rent, okay? Or in some cases, they make it where you can't be on housing at all because you have a man who makes a certain amount of money, a certain amount of income. So women today that's complaining all the damn time, talking about they want a provider, that's not true. Because when providers come along, you want to kick them out the house or you want to make it seem like, seem like he's not even in the house. So you lie to these people, okay? Nothing but musty back helper scammers. You're scamming the system, okay? You are freeloaders. You're freeloading the system. That's the reason why a lot of y'all getting kicked out because you're dishonest and you're deceptive, okay? That's just what it is. And you don't want to work. That's another thing. You're abusing the system. And they do not want the housing authorities 
to count that income to determine what their rent is going to be. So they omit him, okay? And in omitting him, you omit his presence. And then the black man becomes invisible. He's in the household, but I can't even talk to you about what's going on in your household because your name is not on the paperwork, okay? So it's not the system. It's the black woman in many cases because I've had plenty of women sitting in my office discussing with them their unauthorized guest who happened to be the father of all of their children, but they omitted him. And I had to convince them. Now think about it. The baby daddy is actually staying with the woman because you know a lot of times these women who have all these children, the baby daddy is not there. So you actually have a man who wants to be there, a man who has fathered all these children with you, a man who has got you pregnant, several children. He wants to be in the household, but the both of you decide to lie, okay? And trust me, it's her than him. It's going to be more than that. So what you're doing is, and that's my humble opinion, so what you're doing is keeping the man who actually want to be in the household out the household on paper. But yet you always complain you want a man to be with you and that all men are dogs and that men Black men in particular abandon children, but here it is, you have a man that's in the house who want to be there, but you want to hide him. To add him to your lease and make this right so that you can remain housed. So it's not the system. It's the woman that is removing him because she doesn't want his income counted. Where's the lie in that? She didn't tell one lie. Now what I'm going to do is give you some facts, data, and statistics right quick. Some you've seen, some you haven't. Hold on, I'm trying to find it, right? I think this is it. Oh, that's the wrong one. One second, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to use that one in a minute. It's very important. Because there's a lady who's going to say that um, she's going to blame white people, systemic racism, and all this other trash, right? So it's crazy. Let me see. Here it is. This is the one I want to put on the screen for you. Let me make it bigger. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, from my understanding, this is from the um, Pew Research Center and other things. It says right here, Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, found that in the, late, in the least 17 states, black female renters were filed against for eviction at double the rate of white renters or higher. The American Civil Liberties Union's analysis of the 2012 and 2016 eviction data from Massachusetts indicates that black women face the greatest risk of being evicted or having an eviction filed against them. Now think about this now. Y'all are leading in this. Black renters, according to the evictionlab.org, says black renters face a disproportionate share of evictions. Less than one in every five renters in America is black. That's 18.8%. But over half of all eviction filings or against black renters, which is 51.1%. This also means that black renters face far higher risk of eviction than any other group that was in October 3rd, 2023 from the evictionlab.org. Now, according to newamerica.org, it says, within this demographic, black women with children are the most vulnerable, comprising of 28.3% of the average annual rate for eviction filings and 12% of those evicted via court order, the highest of any other group. That was in December 7th, 2023. Now, some of you know it, some of you don't. Excuse me. Some of you know that and some of you don't. That's for new viewers or whatnot, but I'm going to add that to more information. I got more statistics. Now, let me show you a woman who blames black men and blame um, white people and systemic racism for the reason why they're getting thrown out. No accountability at all. That's the problem, ladies. It's the no accountability. That's the issue. Hold on one second as I put it up. Here we go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Make it on the screen for you just right. I'll leave it like that. That's big. But according to these stats, you are the most evicted. I have been waiting to tackle this issue and now it's finally going to happen. So of course you guys have seen the stats about black women being the most evicted and all this thing. And of course the Dusties took it and ran with it. They were so excited that women were being put out in the streets with the children that they abandoned. So I decided to look into it myself because I know that they do not know how to read graphs. And I also know that, um, Systemic racism may have been a part of that. 
Get ready, because here comes the bullshit. Now, first, they in, she insulted black men, call them dusties, and all this other stuff. Now, we're going to get into this. So let's just have a look at exactly what they were gloating about. So first and foremost, we can easily see that, uh, I think that's UW, I think that's University of Washington study, reveals gender disparities in evictions. So first of all, the study that they seen was specific to Washington State. Okay. Let me call cap on that. Because according to the evictionlab.org, according to the U.S. Census Bureau and many other places that study and give you statistics and data, they do it nationwide. OK, so she want to try to make it seem like only black women in a certain part of America is dealing with this. That's bullshit. It's across the board. Let's keep going. OK, it wasn't even specific to the rest of the U.S., but the part that they conveniently left out is it says that eviction rates among, among Black and Latino adults are almost seven times higher than for white adults. So they didn't mention the Latinas getting kicked out. They only mentioned their own women getting kicked out. The reason why we're not mentioning the white man or the Latino man or the Asian man in this scenario is because we're talking directly to the women of our community. That's why we're not mentioning them. We know that they deal with this situation, too. But it doesn't change the fact that the black woman is leading when it comes to women getting kicked out from the Latin women, from the uh, white women to the Asian women. OK, it doesn't change that. And one other reason why we're talking directly to you is because you've been talking directly to us. You've been calling us dogs, telling us that we are men who are bending our children when the statistics plainly show in American Sociological Association statistics and other statistics will tell you that black men are the most involved with their children. So that's why we are talking directly to you. This is classic deflection. This is a woman. This is an immature mindset where a woman would say, well, other people are doing it. So why are not you talking? Why you ain't talking about them? They're doing it. I did it, but they're doing it, too. That's, that's what the, this is right here. Well, first of all, the study that they seen was specific to Washington State. OK, it wasn't even specific to the rest of the U.S. But the part that they conveniently left out is it says that eviction rates among, among black and Latino adults are almost seven times higher than for white adults. So they didn't mention the Latinas getting kicked out. They only mentioned their own women getting kicked out because I mean, what fun is it if other races are getting kicked out too? It's only fun if black women are getting kicked out. And then the study also found out that most of King County's eviction filings, which is where they got the information from, were households of color. And it says some of the highest risk of eviction occur from formerly redlined neighborhoods. For those of you who do not know what redlining is, it is when, um, you know, white supremacists, they traditionally denied black people the right to live in certain areas. So now... Okay, now let's get to it. This is another black woman who wants to blame the white man for every goddamn thing that's happening to him. I get so sick of my people blaming everybody else because what you're doing is encouraging a victim mindset. And when things don't go right or go good for you, it's the white man's fault. It's the black man's fault. It's the circumstance. It's the situation. The sun didn't come up fast enough. It's too cold outside. It's always something that made you fail. Okay, now she's right about redlining to an extent that redlining Redlining was a part of systemic systemic racism at one time. But I'm going to break down what that is because um, redlining no longer exists. It stopped in the 1960s. And I'm going to give you the facts and data statistics right quick right now. Hold on. So let me debunk that shit. All you see is a bunch of lack of accountability right now. You notice how these women are never blaming themselves for getting with these type of men that are putting them in these situations. It's always someone else. You're choosing to sleep with Pookie. You're choosing to screw Pookie, Ray Ray, and Nook Nook. You're choosing to have these children. You are choosing to make the decision that are putting you in poverty and making you get kicked out of your home. That ain't nobody else's fault but yours. Okay, now let's get started on the on the um statistics, okay? First, let, break, let me break down what redlining is, okay? Redlining. Hold on, make sure it's on the screen. I want to make it bigger for y'all. Hold on. There it is. Redlining practices were prevalent from the 1930s to 1960s, okay? Ostensibly, in other words, apparently, intended to reduce lender risk. Redlining effectively institutionalized racist, sorry, racial bias, making it easier to discriminate against and limit home buying opportunities for people of color. That was um, done in um, August 4th, 
2023 from the eviction lab. And I want you to know something. This redlining practice started in the 30s, but it ended in the 60s. So why in the fuck are you still talking about redlining in, well, 24 years past the millennia? We in 2024. Redlining has nothing to do with shit now. Now, you can keep saying that it's the legacy. It's the legacy. That's a lie. Because I live in uh, a particular affluent neighborhood myself, as well as many other black men who live upper middle class. And redlining did not stop us, didn't stop us from getting our home. Okay, you know what stopped you from getting home? Money. You know what helps you get the home? Money. It don't have shit to do with the color red. It has everything to do with the color green. Now, next statistic from the um, 538.com. It says, some 40 years after the first redlining map was drawn, redlining was banned under the Fair Housing Act of 1968. But in many ways, HOLC and the Federal Housing Administration had already written the textbook for racist real estate practices. That was um, this statistic came out in February 9th of 2022. Now, 40 years after the redlining map, they used to have maps back in the day that would determine where black folk, colored folk can live and where they could not live and where white folks and white people could or could not live. It was designed to benefit white people. But that stopped. It started in the 30s and it ended in the 60s. In 1968, it was banned by the Fair Housing Act of 1968. A lot of you are familiar with the um, Fair Housing Act because when you get an apartment or a lease or anything like that, you'll see that on the um, applications. You'll see Fair Housing Acts nationwide. Maybe you don't notice it because you don't pay attention to it. But white folks, systemic racism don't got shit to do but you're not being able to stay at your house. You want to try to say, um, ger- what is it, gerification, gentrif- gentrification, whatever it is. No, it's not that. It's the fact that you can't afford the property taxes no more. It's the fact that you can't afford rent no more. Now, some of you will go into this conspiracy theory that why you think taxes go up. They want to kick you out. Taxes are going up all over the country. Inflation is a motherfucker. Everything is higher now. Okay. The cost of living is harder now. Has nothing to do with redlining or someone else. White people are dealing with inflation just as much as black people are, just as much as Hispanics are, just as much as the Asian, just as much as the Indian person. If you live in America, you are dealing with higher taxes now than ever before. You're dealing with inflation. Okay? No one, it's funny how it's us who like to blame everybody else. I don't hear these other communities of colors talking about, oh, it's them. Know what they do? They put their, they put their head down and go to work. A lot of you just don't want to work. You want to rely on that twenty dollars a month that you get from housing, from welfare, or whatever. That's what you want. That's why you're mad. I'm gonna put this lady back on the screen so we can continue to hear the bullshit that she's trying to tell you. Hold on one second. There it is. Now that the red line has been erased. Those same areas that was most heavily redlined are now the source of the highest eviction rates for black women. And then I also found this piece of information that says calls to the police to report domestic violence could also provide why landlords are evicting uh, women as well. Because guess what? If a black woman has a man living with her and he decides to uh, get physical with her and she calls the police, and he wasn't on the lease, but he was living there, she can get kicked out if it's in low-income housing. Now, check it out. Again, black women love to make the black man look like the boogeyman, the monster. Now, what she is failing to tell y'all, since we've been listening to her, she hasn't said one time the reason why women are getting kicked out because they're not paying their rent. Renters, people who um, rent you homes and apartments, don't kick you out unless for one reason. Mainly, it's money. Unless you are destructive and turn up shit, money is the reason here. Now, she want to say men are putting their hands on women, but she's not saying that these women are choosing to sleep with these men and bring these men into the home who are not on the lease. And she's only making reference now to a certain subculture of black men in the black community. The Pookie, the Ray Ray, the Nook Nooks. They don't represent the greater half, the greater part of the black community. These subculture, these certain subculture of men you women are chasing and you are bringing them in because a good man, a regular man say, hey, I want to be on the lease. He's not going to say I don't want to be on the lease. That's a weak man. OK, you can't blame it on credit. You can't blame. It. That's your decision. 
At the end of the day, woman, you decided to bring these men into your home. At the end of the day, you chose not to pay your rent. Now, I know circumstances come like layoffs and shit like that. But if you are such an independent woman, you should already have money saved up. It ain't our fault you don't got money saved. And it ain't our fault that you can't budget your money. And you should work another job if that's the case, especially if you got children. Okay? So you cannot tell me that it's the black man's fault because the police will call on the black man. And then the, the landlord said, no, nah, you got to go because you got a black man here. You see how you're not taking any type of accountability? But he was living there. She can get kicked out if it's in low income housing. So just as we suspected, a lot of these women are being kicked out because they took Pookie in and he he wound up uh, abusing her. So I like, why are y'all excited about this? Black women being evicted and they have children with them that you created and abandoned. But y'all so spiteful. Y'all are excited to see children getting kicked out in the streets because you don't like things. Now, ain't that a bunch of bullshit? I don't know any man that's running around celebrating the fact that children are being put out on the street. That's something you're saying. And you brought up Pookie. Thank you for bringing up Pookie. But what you fail to bring up is the women who choose to be with Pookie. You women are giving choosing signals to the wrong men. And you know they're the wrong men most of the time. But you still move them in. You still get them pregnant. I mean, they still get you pregnant. So if you losing your home, it still come down to you. Let's keep going. Um, there's a study going around um, that highlights the statistics of how many black people get evicted from their apartments. And out of those numbers, um, it shows that black women um, get evicted more than black men by 36%. What behooves me are the many TikTok videos and Instagram videos that I see of black men, specifically toxic, narcissistic, oh, shit. like the Dusties, okay? They're making videos laughing and smearing black women due to these statistics of us getting evicted more than black men. So I wanna address the Dusties that got so much motherfucking shit to say oh, shit. about us being evicted more. I'm going to clear y'all out real quick. Oh, shit. Number one, black men don't put their names on shit. Y'all don't put y'all motherfucking names on leases or nothing. No, 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 no. Hold up, motherfucker. You ain't going to say too many motherfuckers right now. I'm going to tell you something. You are another woman who blaming everybody else. Black man, you don't put your name on shit. No. You have a woman who agreed to the fact that a man didn't put his name on shit. You are choosing. I'm telling you, there's no such thing. As a self-respecting man who has the means and the ability to provide, who's going to move in with a woman and say, don't put my name on the lease. Because we understand and always have understood that when a woman getting her feelings, she can kick you the fuck out and ain't nothing you can do about it. That's her shit. She can call the police and get you pulled out of her home or her apartment, no matter how many payments you made towards the mortgage or towards the rent. I don't know no men like that. Now, you keep talking about these certain subculture of men in the community. You don't see no more but pookies because your circles are so small. I see the pookies, Ray Ray and Nook Nooks, and I also see great, outstanding black men. I do. But you know what I see more of? Holes and ghetto ratchet thoughts. More than I do see than I see ladies. So let's talk about it. You're so busy leeching off of a woman. Everything goes on the woman's name and you lay up on her, you eat her food up, you run her bills up, you don't provide, you don't pay your motherfucking child support. So she's stuck with everything. She's carrying. So who fucking fault is that? If you know that that man has other children and he's not taking care of those other children, he doesn't work. He lays up on his ass all day. He eats all your food, all the things you just said. That means that the woman who is going through that has full knowledge of those things going on. So why isn't that woman leaving? Why is that woman better yet choosing that type of man of that type of character? Again, another woman who wants to deflect and put the responsibility of her failures on someone else. At the end of the day, it is the woman's fault who allows herself to go through that. It ain't nobody else's fault but yours. You made these decisions. You are reaping what you sowed. You are dealing with the consequences of your ignorant choices. Ain't nobody's fault but yours. In the weight of the world on her shoulders. 
And after you have drained her and depleted her of all her resources and finances and ate her out of a house and home, you bounce with your side chick or you run back home to your mama. That's why the motherfucking statistics show women getting evicted more than black, black men, black women, black men. Because y'all don't put y'all names on shit. Your credit's fucked up. First of all, you can't get shit in your name. Don't nobody want you moving into their neighborhoods. All right. There's a lot. I'm going to do, do a show about that, I guess. Um, There are more women with fucked up credit than I think men do. Almost every black woman that you meet, credit is fucked up. So she's reaching for shit out of thin air. She's trying to throw enough shit on the wall hoping something thick um, sticks to the wall. You get what I'm saying? All this about the side chick, this woman has been hurt by a man who has side chicks because that's all she's going to say in this video. Because I can see why a man would want to cheat on her. Her attitude, her motherfucking mouth is a problem. It's a problem the way she thinks. So, yeah, your name, naturally, your name is not going to be on the fucking lease. It's always in the black woman's name. You put your car in your mama's name or your baby mama's name. You're laid up at your baby mama's house. And when your baby mama uh, kick your ass out, you run back home to your mama. Or you try to target successful black women that got their lives together, own their homes and cars and shit. You move in with her and you take her money and blow it on your side chick or your side dude. Because some of y'all is in the closet, by the way. And you take... Well, you love these side chicks, baby. I tell you, you love these side chicks. Well, you a side chick? Tear her finances up and you destroy her credit. Then you bounce and you move on with your side chick. So <laughs> stop making jokes about the black woman getting evicted when the root of the cause is the fact that we're out here trying to help you low lives build we try to lift and build y'all up and y'all tear us down and move on with the next woman just to repeat the cycle with the next woman and for most of y'all that were raised by a single mother ask your mama what happened to your daddy and why did he leave y'all like that watch what you say now if if a man's daddy dealt with a woman like you, he wouldn't have to ask why he left. Because it's obvious. I don't even know you personally. And I can already listen to you and tell you that I wouldn't want to be in the same room with you. I wouldn't even want to touch you. I don't know. Maybe if I was drinking a lot of scotch or something and, you know, yeah. I'm going to say something vulgar like shut you up, put something in your mouth. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to remain a gentleman today. Now, if I would have said put something in her mouth so you can shut the fuck up. Then I would have become at that moment the gentleman who have come who has gone rogue. Fuck it, I'm gonna be the gentleman who gone wrong, bitch. I'll put. Oops, I'm trying to stop using the B word because I I love to say it so much. I'll put something in your mouth. Anyway, y'all let me know what you think about this man. Um, in the you know comments. This is part two. I might do a part three to the eviction series. I'll talk to y'all later, and y'all have a good one. Now you hear. Ooh.